Hello, my name is Ilona. In this video, I want to take a look at coping mechanisms and patterns that we use to kind of go through life. This is part of my shadow work videos. And it's very important to understand patterns and coping mechanisms. So usually we're developing them in uh, our youth when we grow up, depending on the situation and depending on how you are raised. I was raised myself in uh, not uh, being able to handle my emotions or my feelings. My parents weren't taught that either. So they were really, this is not a blame game. They were really just doing what they thought was best. And uh, well, I grew up with not being able to handle it. So my coping mechanism was to eat. And I had more coping mechanisms, more patterns that I developed. I will talk about uh, later about one pattern, which was very interesting. I came across actually uh, two days ago. So that's that's actually part of why I wanted to do this video. So we really have to look what do coping mechanisms of certain parents do. They are parents in a way uh, things happen to us. We don't know how to deal with them, especially as children. Uh, we're taught certain things that we're not to do, uh, not to be angry or not to be sad. We're not looked I would say that our parents don't really see us. That's a possibility. You know, there are all kinds of possibilities and we kind of deal with it by using these patterns or these me uh, coping mechanisms to uh, well continue our life, not be devastated by it. It's like all these pain, sadness, hurt. We just push that aside and we kind of put this a mechanism in front of it so if we ever get hurt again or something happens that is similar we act a certain way that's like a response that we do in my case when i was feeling too much emotions or feelings i didn't know how to deal with i would eat that was my coping mechanisms and you have all kinds of coping mechanisms all kind of addictions of course alcohol you have the um usual suspects in the addictions but you can also have an addiction to shopping you can have an addiction to being distracted always being online or always gaming uh, always being surrounded by people that you don't want to be alone because then of course you'll be uh, more connected or what's going on you could start feeling miserable so there can all kinds of ways to not be with ourselves or not connect with ourselves that's how i see coping mechanisms and certain patterns they're there to make sure that we do not connect with ourselves of course our the dark forces that have been going on have programmed us to not search into ourselves so we need to do things outside of ourselves uh, of course with religion as well the bible is something outside of ourselves it's a very important book there are a lot of important things in there but ultimately the connection to god is in ourselves not outside ourselves and they programmed us you know if you feel bad go buy something if you feel uh, this go eat something make yourself feel better that was of course their mantra because they wanted to keep you busy outside of yourself so we wouldn't connect with ourselves and we wouldn't realize that we are spiritual beings in this human experience they wanted to keep away from us from that and of course the way we were raised a lot of pain anger frustration a lot of things were not dealt with so we kept that we keep that in our energy that's why shadow work is so important especially now because we need to start healing things. I can just feel it also in the energy. Things are coming up now very quickly. We need to take a look at that. So you have all these coping mechanisms and there's so much you can find about this, how to deal with certain things. It can be like uh, something outside of yourself, like uh, drinking, eating, uh, looking for um, distraction. It can also be inside that there are patterns to keep you away from that pain. So if someone says something and they, you know, you feel hurt, you can, you know, there are people that will lash out in the extreme case, they can get very aggressive. So instead of dealing with their pain, they're taking it outside, outside themselves. They will focus it on the person that in their mind is the one that hurt them not understanding that the pain was already in themselves and they really need to deal with it especially when you're an adult you know we need to start taking responsibility for that pain for all the anger for the issues that we have the baggage the sadness we cannot 
um, make other people responsible for that. They are not. So if someone does something or says something and that hurts you, it's your responsibility to take care of that pain. It's important to look at if that person actually did it on purpose or not, although I will talk about that a little later because it's very important that we start looking at someone's um, behavior. That was like a pitfall for myself, actually, especially when you feel a lot of things and you start, you know, you feel other people's pains as well. You do start to understand them and then you can kind of get into this problem that you're like, oh, yeah, well, they don't mean that in a way they're doing it because of this and this and this. But, you know, they keep doing it. So you have to respond to the behavior and separate that from the person, so to speak. But I'll get into that a little later. I just want to talk a little bit more about coping mechanisms. It was very interesting. I'm just, there's so much to talk about. So I'm just going to, um, you know, I'm not going to make this extremely long video. I don't like long videos. I'll be very honest. And um, I just want to take an example again, because that's uh, to me uh, important, you know, so you can understand what's going on. But I had uh, two emails about two weeks, uh, two days ago. It was an interesting time. I already did a video about putting up boundaries and really, you know, Friday about um, what was going on in my life. So I also took an example of what was going on in my life with a lot of uh, noise around me. They were working on the apartment complex next to me. And that really hurt me in a way because it was like invading in my boundaries. So I talked about putting up boundaries and... Um, so I got two emails around, I think the same day, probably what happened. So this was interesting. Uh, there were two separate videos so that people had nothing to do with each other. They were asking about two completely different countries. But the interesting was that this was also something I done or I've had as a coping mechanism when I was growing up, especially things that happened in my life. I started to be very sarcastic. I was brought up, especially with my father, really um, targeted people that were in his eyes saying dumb things. So you had to be very sharp. You really had to watch what you're saying. You couldn't screw up or make some, uh, some uh, how do you say, the unconscious remark because he'd be on top of things. He'd be completely on top of it and kind of tearing you down. So I was brought up with be, be smart, be, uh, you know, proactive, jump on things. It's all, it, it, it was a very aggressive energy, so to speak, and a very, I got really sarcastic. So that was my way of coping with things. So if someone came too close, I would kind of push them away right away. Now, sarcasm was very interesting because both these males, and especially the second one, was the inspiration for this vlog. I was like, you know, I want to talk about coping mechanisms and what people do to get through life, maybe even without them noticing that that's what they're doing. So this is really just to create awareness. So the first uh, was more like, well, you, you, uh, she was talking, she kind of wrote me about some country and about information that I've had. And then uh, she sent me a few mails. And uh, at the moment, I really couldn't respond quickly or... I had no idea what how to respond to that, so I just left it at. But her last uh, mail, she actually wrote, well, I can see that you're just gathering information here and there. So, of course, that you don't know the truth. I know the truth. Well, that's putting yourself higher than someone else. That's also a coping mechanism. And in a way, being sarcastic, I also placed myself higher. So that was interesting. That was a very old mechanism that I kind of dealt with, but I still felt it, it actually still hurt somewhere a little bit. I'm like, oh, I have to look at that. Well, the second mail was very interesting. I kind of had to laugh about that. It was, to be very honest, very creative way of manipulating. I uh, did my video Friday about, uh, you know, I needed to put my boundaries down. And sometimes I wasn't very good at this. She actually wrote in a mail. It's like, well, you were talking about that video that you didn't know, uh, you know, you still had to put down your boundaries properly. And, um, well, I think that you do know how to put your boundaries in order. I've asked you about a certain country a while ago and you said you were going to look into it. Well, 
when I say look into it, I just let it happen. I see maybe I'll come up with it, maybe I'll do something with it or not. But she really thought that I was going to take a look at it. So she actually took that like, so you really put a boundary there not to deal with this country. Why don't you want to deal with this country? And uh, I hope you're still going to deal with this country or is that too much for you? Or uh, will you have to, uh, how do you say this? Uh, will it will go? So sometimes I get the Dutch expression, but it, it came down to the things that she very sarcastically put like, or is it too much for you to put, to go through that boundary or something like that? It was really making fun, so to speak, of my video. Which was very interesting. I was just looking at it. Wow, I need to do a, a, a video about this shadow work about placing yourself higher than someone else and then try to manipulate them by using vulnerabilities because that's what she was doing. I was very vulnerable in that video and then she uses it to get me to where she wants me to, uh, you know, wants me to be so that I would start talking about this country. Very interesting. So if you are seeing this video, thank you very much for that, for that mail. Very interesting. There was still some old pain in myself I've dealt with because I, I start to feel then what's going on. It, was, it wasn't really a big thing. It wasn't something that knocked me out. But I was very fascinated by it because if you look at people, maybe sometimes you talk to someone and you get this very strange feeling in your stomach, like, oh, what's going on? It's very possible someone places themselves above you. Well, if someone has the need to place themselves above you and to put you down, that is insecurity full time. At the moment when I was very sarcastic, I was so insecure. Someone that is secure doesn't have any need to put down anyone and certainly not use someone um, vulnerability to manipulate them because really that's actually an awful thing to do to take something something vulnerable or maybe some certain information maybe you've dealt with people that take certain information and use it as ammo to get you to do what they want you to do and that's actually a very sick way of dealing with things but I had to look at myself as well. It was a very old coping mechanism, how I handled things as well. And I have done in the past. I was a lot younger, not an excuse, obviously, but when I was a lot younger, I was very good at finding vulnerable spots in someone and actually using it against them. So I really, that, that was not a good time. I have to say that was not a good time. Was less, that's pretty much also how my I know how my father certainly raised us. If we did something in his eyes stupid, uh, childish or whatever, he would turn it against us. And it's not a good thing, unfortunately. He was raised that way as well. So like I said, it's not a blame game. But I want to get back at something very important. Uh, which the pitfall I was talking about because I am very sensitive and a lot of people that watch my videos are very sensitive We do understand where the other person comes from That is when you are growing you're spiritually growing you start to understand Oh, this person is doing this because of this 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 Problem is that because you start to understand them at least what I did uh, for a long time I st kind of start to um, uh, push things kind of under the carpet, how you say that, swipe them under the carpet, like, oh, well, the person didn't mean it like that, that uh, I just kind of have to deal with, I just have to be the wise one, I'll be fine, I understand why they're doing it. It's okay if that is what you decide to do. So if you're dealing with a certain person that hurts you or has a very negative energy, it, it, it has an effect on your energy, you can make a decision. Do I want to continue seeing this pe person or not? If you are like, you know what, I can handle this, it's not uh, lowering my energy, then you should continue or find a way that is suitable for you. But you have to watch out that you are, you know, you can be understanding and put up a boundary. That is so important. You have to deal with someone's actions. 
Now, of course, you can talk to them, hope that they might see uh, well, sort of the light or change their ways. Sometimes that can happen, but sometimes they just don't. They don't have the understanding or the self-reflection. That case, you have to make a decision. Do I want to continue with this friendship, with this family member, or um, maybe even with a spouse or a loved one? Do I want to have this in my energy? Can I handle this without lowering my energy? So that's a decision you will have to make. But how do you say this? Look at the behavior. If the behavior affects you, hurts you in a way, they keep doing it because they don't understand that, you know, what they're doing uh, is not, so to speak, wrong, but they don't understand what the mechanism is, so they keep doing it, you will have to make a decision if you're going to put up a boundary or not, if you can handle that or not. If, because if it affects your energy, that is your responsibility. You are not responsible for someone else's feelings, for someone else's uh, actions. You're just not. I am responsible for my actions, for who I am, and my connection with God. That is my responsibility. So we really have to separate that. And I have to make decisions also in my family, like certain people were so negative and I was just drained. I noticed that it's just not good for me. So I kind of just step aside. I distance myself, even though it is family. But if my energies are going to be lowered by someone, I just felt, no, this, this isn't right for me. So it's very important to look at that. And you can make a decision to still continue seeing someone. That's a decision you can always make, but make sure that your energy is fine, that you manage to stay in a high frequency because that is your responsibility now. This is the Great Awakening and our, our responsibility is to keep our energy as high as possible, to deal with our shadow sides so we will grow, we will start manifesting this beautiful new world. We need to take responsibility for ourselves. We need to look at people's actions, separate them from the person. So if they continue this action and continue doing things that hurt us or don't feel right to us, we will have to make a decision. Do we put up with it or not? And that's the decision you can only make because you will have to see what the effect is on your energy. And it's fine if you decide, you know, I can handle this, I can deal with this. And it's also fine to say, no, I, I can't, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to walk away because my energy is that important to me or I cannot keep my energy high around this person. So that's a decision you will have to make yourself, but don't fall into the pitfall. I was falling like understanding, oh, I understand they're doing this or talking to them and they'll be like, yes, you're right. I have to change things. I've had that happen many times and then they didn't change. So they kept doing it anyway. And then I would have to say that, you know, you're doing it again and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to change, but they never changed. There comes a point that you have to or accept that they are the way they are and not say anything about that and deal with it in another way or to move away. And to be very honest, that's the decision I've made. If I feel my energy is being, you know, it doesn't, uh, dr it's draining. First of all, I'm going to take a look at myself. What's going on? What does this person that's apparently in my life telling me what's, well, probably that I have to put up boundaries. Or I have to look at certain things or, you know, you really can use that because people are in your life for a reason. And now if you've kind of found, figured that out or you can really feel what's going on, then you can make a decision to move away or not. And to be very honest, usually when I feel I've um, kind of figured out what the, uh, the most important thing is in this situation and I've started to work with it and I've kind of started to clear things, it kind of just moves away from it. I've, I've noticed that because I was in a lot of noise uh, fr Friday, uh, Thursday and Friday. I've worked with it and Saturday morning they were still there, but just for three hours and apparently everything is finished. So they did what they had to do. And that's things that are happening as well. Like if you really change in your selfie energy, it will leave. So it's very possible if you deal with certain things that come up in, in relationships with others, that those people will fall away or they'll change. But usually you change yourself and sometimes you have to make decisions, especially when you're in a relationship with someone and it's just not working out. 
Uh, we do have a tendency, at least people that are highly sensitive, to just go along with it, hoping it will get better. At a certain point, you will have to step in and really take care of yourself. That is your responsibility. So I want to leave it at this and I hope to see you in another video. Bye.